It was on a dreary night of November that I beheld the accomplishments of my toys. Hey dummy, this is my narration. You are on the incorrect video. Oh, sorry. Okay, don't mind. Hmm, so as I was trying to tell you before being rudely interrupted, I, I, fell into some shameful behavior because I was crying all night for my ex. I know, I know, I know. Very shameful behavior of mine. But while I was crying for that human being, a rather interesting conundrum came to mind. So I asked myself what was the purpose of my life? If it was either crying all night long, or actually doing something productive with my life and making a very highly edited and very funny video for my beautiful viewer to be entertained and informed. So the decision was rather an easy one. And of course I chose the first one, like, the no, I'm just kidding. I of course selected the second one because, I mean, why would you cry for someone who already has someone else? Like... Yeah, I mean, it's very funny sometimes, especially when you're very bored, but it's something that you shouldn't do. In any case, mm, well, this is going to be the video that I produce for almost an entire week for you. But before getting into the actual video, I will introduce myself. Salute Oh, hi. I'm the Vance Lauder, and I'm your favorite rock star. And this is the only channel here on YouTube that is produced by someone who was abducted by a vampire marmot. And remember that I can... And remember that I can be your favorite editor, so link below. Just a very quick disclosure, trigger warning about this movie. Um, this movie is one of, one of those movies that are like the impersonation of that boy in middle school who thinks he's funny just because he's saying offensive jokes and he believes that everybody needs to hear his racist and stupid and misogynistic takes on life. So that's mostly what this movie is. Uh, it's about a joke from a middle schooler. So if you would like to get a summary and a very delightful critique done by me, your favorite rock star, you can watch this video. But I will warn you, it is offensive in not very funny ways, as South Park tried to. It's more offensive like it's even an ignominy that I'm doing this video. But as I said, I was missing my ex, so it was either crying all night or doing this video. So I hope you enjoy. This movie starts in a high note. Not that high note, the band the pianist. It starts in a high note in... Misogyny. My friends think that you're gonna turn out to be really fat and ugly, but... Yes, we are introduced to Krusty, who is one of the main protagonists of this movie, who is enamored, is in love, by a girl that he met online and his friends told to him that there is a possibility that she's fat and ugly so wow we're already starting very high on the misogyny scale and i severely and wholeheartedly have a question why on every single american comedy movie of the 2000s men have to act like trash like 
Is it a stereotype? Do all men in America act like that? I mean, I'm not from the US, so that's a very important question. Like, is it really like that there? Like, I, I don't know. I have more questions than answers. I don't know. Our next scene is two characters, Wang and Pete, who they are getting high into avoiding stress. And they are um, inserting substances grabbed in latex in places where you shouldn't introduce substances. <laughs> but let me tell you that the scene was actually funny. Well, I mean, it's disgusting, but at least I got like half a laugh at it. So we will give it that, at least. Then we are introduced to Danny and Leah. Danny is the smart of the two blonde twins, and Leah is the one who likes to get wasted and be like a party girl. On the meantime, we are also introduced to Lynn and... What was the name again? We are also introduced to Lynn and Newmar, who they are doing sort of a roleplay and... This was some funny. Um, Lynn is actually a very offensive stereotype, so um, more on that later. We are also introduced to Brady and Mike, and Mike is sort of just a, um, a tool to make a transphobic joke at the end. And I mean, that's his whole purpose in this movie. He literally only appears like three times, and he only appears at the end to get a transphobic joke. So, good on that, I guess. No, it's not good. Dislike. We are also introduced to another character named Cliff. Now, Cliff was making a deal, a rather questionable deal, if you know what I mean. He was trafficking blow dolls to the blow doll mafia, I guess, and one of the merchandise um, was defective. So he was prosecuted by the Chinese Mafia, mm, I guess. So now, back in with Krusty, as now he introduced all of his dumb friends to his love interest, he decided to show his love interest how he whacks his derriere and how the bush is now trimmed, because I guess... I guess why not? However, he was doing a dance, he was swingling and dangling that thing around when his fathers decided to come into the room so his son's reaction, instead of putting his pants up was to close the computer and he closed the computer on his kakunga Yeah, 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 very funny, I know Okay, after being introduced to the most disgusting flash animation I have seen thus far in my life, and believe me that I have seen some horrible things, I can even do something better on Premiere. I believe. I mean, they are not paying me, so I'm not even going to attempt to do it. In any case, now they are on a train to Romania because they were like sort of in an exchange for a semester. When they were on the train, someone was recalling a legend that I will tell you in a moment what the legend was about, however... Mm, what was his name? However, Krusty decided to brag about his girl to everybody and they couldn't hold on their misogyny yet again and they found out that the computer had a questionable liquid on the picture of his girl if you can imagine what type of liquid it was. Now, on the legend this legend contains an offensive stereotype of a gay person who is very vapid and useless and it contains a vampire hunter which it doesn't have a name, he doesn't have a name, we will call him Van Helsing, I guess, I don't even know. So the legend was that there was a vampire who had a love interest and they were going to conquer the world, but this vampire hunter trapped the soul of the vampires on a music box and then he asked his gay assistant to put the carriage at a specific point at a specific time and of course as, he's bab as he is bappy and dumb he didn't put the carriage in the place where it was supposed to be so when Van Helsing jumped off the window he fell straight with Amy Winehouse 
Oh yeah, I refer to Amy Winehouse as God, so he basically went to heaven, so yeah. That was the legend. <laughs> Very funny, I know. Then we are introduced to an action scene that surprisingly, and I have to give credit where credit is due, it was actually filmed decently. So, props on that. And yeah, I don't have anything to complain about that. <laughs> However, we are introduced as soon as the persecution ends and on the train the man who was being pursued drop a music box on the sack of a gypsy woman. So yeah, we are introduced to another offensive stereotype of a gypsy woman who sells things. So for this movie I will give it a very peculiar treatment. I will give it the offensive stereotype counter, because these, these things, especially in today's day and age, should be held accountable. So, here it goes. So, back to the history. This movie basically revolves around uh, an evil vampire who, he needs a name. Okay, I got a name. His name will be Lord Cloaca Aspasuatas. Lord Cloaca Don't even ask why, I just figured it out. Okay, so Lord Cloaca Aspaswatas had to revive his vampires in an strange ritual to conquer the world or to go to McDonald's, I guess. In any case, the music box was now in possession of a simple mortal. Who is that simple mortal, you might ask to yourself? That simple mortal is Newmar, who gifted the box to Lin. Oh, Newmar, it's beef? Okay, so do we remember Wang, who is the Chinese dude who inserted a wombat sized object filled with pot into his intestines? Well, he go into the wagon where some characters were at. I don't remember them all, but I remember that Pete and Danny were there. And I will say that it is unfortunate because they were a couple back then and I will just say that mm, I do not approve this and I will explain why in a moment. So basically Wang invited them to go and get high and the only one who accepted was Pete. So they went into the back side of the train to basically just like a cargo cart where there were some coffins and when they opened the coffin there was a sleeping vampire. They thought that it was someone deceased, so they couldn't hold back on the misogyny and they cat called the dormant vampire. Wow, that is one fine ass girl. And I will just say right now Pit is the most disgusting character of this entire movie because he He's a cheater. A perfidious cheater. And I don't like cheaters. Mm -mm. That's not allowed here. Or is it? No, 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 it's not, it's not. Okay, so back to the history. Once they arrived to Romania, they decided to terrorize the locals, as every American does apparently in American comedies. And once they terrorized the locals, they found a... What was this thing called? Oh yeah, they found a carriage, and that carriage took them to the university, where a very tasteless and vulgar joke was introduced that whenever someone said the name of the school, the horses will pop out a fart. <laughs> now, one and Pete were left behind, so they decided to go and bother a local, because of course they needed to go and bother some locals because remember we're watching a comedy, of course. And the local apparently values a lot blue jeans because apparently in Romania, blue jeans don't exist and are the rarest item you could find. More rarer than gold, more special than diamonds. So of course, the currency there is basically blue jeans according to the writers of this movie. So they exchange their blue jeans a pair of blue jeans for a motorcycle. Do we remember the vampire hunter S who was pursuing someone rather strange? Well, she is at the school and she's warning the director of the school that Lord Cloaca Aspaswatas is about to revive and breed with him. 
something so horrible, something so terrible that everybody would be in shock. Do you know what it is? It's a new Jonas Brothers album. No, I'm just kidding. It was, it's basically the apocalypse, but I mean, it's like a synonym at this point, so yeah. They had their first class, which was a rather questionable self-defense class who was imparted by the Vampire Hunter, which I might say, she looks extremely familiar to someone, but I don't know to who. Okay, anyhow, after the lesson, some dudes uh, invited Danny to go get wasted with them and those dudes were basically Pete and Wank of course and they invited Leah over and she agreed and of course as they are very good, polite and amiable friends they decided to abandon her in a foreign country alone well not alone but in a castle where apparently there were people that went missing because every good friend always does that for you so, the unfortunate happened and she was kidnapped and Lynn and Newmar were reading some literature. No, they were not reading good literature, they were reading the Kama Sutra. Now, on the list of subsequent events we have misogyny, bad jokes, rap, more dwarfiness in bad jokes and Dragura. The love interest of Krusty, who of course she was extremely beautiful, but I mean this movie just couldn't hold back on the misogyny, they couldn't hold back on the homophobia, they couldn't hold back on the transphobia, they couldn't hold back on racially offensive stereotypes. They, uh, they also, they also, it was a must. If this wasn't on the movie, the movie wouldn't exist. They also needed to be ableist. Because of course, like it's very funny to laugh at someone who is malformed and who is in excruciating pain by their condition or who is mistreated by society, because that's very funny of course. So Dragura, the love interest of Krusty, had a hump and that apparently was sufficient reason for Krusty, I mean it wasn't disclosed information and mm, I don't even know how a conversation like that should go, I'm not the type of person because I myself don't suffer from an ailment like that, but I think it should be disclosed because it's pretty apparent. In any case, um, so Krusty saw Dragura and he was basically in shock and he was disgusted because of course he's a gentleman and gentlemen are always disgusted at your first day instead of just going to the bathroom and never coming back, which would be a more polite route. In any case, he was disgusted at what he saw and there we are introduced formally to the dad of Dragura, who is the director, which I will give him a name. Mm, he looks like Clancy, but with a weird last name, so he will be Clancy Anandas. Clancy? Don't ask me why. Okay, so Dragura is the daughter of Clancy Anandas, and then Clancy Anandas introduced Krusty to his fate if he decided to hold Dragura, which was being in his torture chamber, held captive until the next one came in. So yeah, I mean, a very beautiful and normal family, and I will spoil the movie a little. The only real danger of this movie, apart from the stupidity of the characters, is Clancy Anandas. Yes, that's the main trait of this movie. Not even the vampires themselves. They they are basically um no one. No, I mean they are someone, but they are not as dangerous as Clancy Anandas. Clancy Anandas is the real danger here. Meanwhile, Lynn, who was with Newmar, accidentally prick her finger. With who? I don't even remember to be honest, but she pricked her finger and left a droplet of her own vital liquid into the music box, um, very coincidentally, and she revived the ghost of the vampires. And now the ghost of the vampires was in possession of her body, so she started talking with a rather hmm, questionable Romanian accent, because I'm pretty sure Romanians don't have that accent, they have a different one. And 
Yeah, I mean, not that much of that scene, to be honest. It was just an introduction to the powers of the music box. This is not my body. You... You set me free. And then, we discover pretty soon that Wang and Pete are two donkeys who decided to go on illegal hunting of illegal species by the mafia because of course that's what everybody dreams to do go and hunt poor innocent animals that cannot even defend themselves against these two donkeys but mm, the dangerous species that they were hunting was actually Cliff their friend who was prosecuted by the mafia for selling um, ratchety blow dolls and he was exchanged by a pair of blue jeans. So, I have a lot of questions, but the main one is, who wrote this? Because this movie is trash so far. In fact, I know who did. Do you want to know who did? Oh, let me tell you. The writers of this trash were Pat Casey, who in this movie is Mike, and Josh Miller, who is bratty, because yes, in Romania they don't have Amazon nor Alibaba, and their currency is blue jeans, so of course, of course, with the recession and because they are apparently not a very developed country, they need the mighty American blue jeans to make a living by, like, no, no, I cannot even express my disappointment in the type of comedy that was produced by people and that was greenlit by studios. It's offensive, it's not funny. Well, I mean, there were like three good jokes, but I mean, I could literally write something like this in a piece of toilet paper 10 times better. And it wouldn't be racially offensive because why do we thought back then, and a lot of people still to today, that just because you're offending someone that's funny? There are some times where it is, but no, in this time, no. So we will give them the treatment of shame. So shame three times for them. Shame, shame, shame. So we can go back to the movie. Steven Hayden. Transylvania is such a colossal comedic misfire that it makes the execrable scary movie films look like masterworks of Preston Sturgesque genius by comparison. So, a few ableist and homophobic jokes later. Hello, hello, it's Did you pump her? <laughs> oh yeah? Well, freshman year Mike made out with a dude in Cancun. You son of a... The vampire hunter who I'm still trying to figure out to who she looks like because she looks rather familiar. <laughs> Tried to convince Clancy and Nandas that there was some vampiric, and vampiric activity in the school so he should shut down classes, but he gave two dems, two. And that resulted in Leah, Pete and Wong finding the secret laboratory of Clancy and Nandas in which they found Leah. But they found her head. But her head was still alive. But I mean, she was missing her body, who was literally in front of her. So they were trying to figure out how to put Leah's head back into her body, and while they were like playing with the body, I guess, they were like examining it, but rather weirdly, they accidentally started pulling the stitch from the body and that stitch came in in a very very long thread so the body was pulled apart by a lot and I cannot show that here because this video might get nuked and we don't want that so now the body was pulled apart like a chicken on a rostisserie or like Marie Antoinette when those uncivilized mongrels decided to behead her. Cliff of course had to lie about being a vampire hunter because that's what you do when you want to impress girls, so he was recruited by... Oh, oh now I know who she looks like. She looks like Fergie.
Yeah, so she will be Virginator 10,000. So Cliff was recruited by Virginator 10,000 on a quest to defeat Cloaca. So, while they were mm, hunting for vampires, Krusty decided that as he was going now to the vampire Corgi, he needed to get some blue pills to get his Kakunga heart as a tree, if you know what I mean. So he went to the dealer of the school and this dealer gave him a lot of pills that were not for that particular use. You know, funny thing is that with that amount of pills, it could result in one of those histories where you end up in the bed of 8 pedestrians under a bridge with 3 tattoos and a missing kidney. Cliff and Virginator were looking for Cloaca, and Lin opened up the box again. So we. Wait, the vampire. the vampires needs a name. So we will call the vampires when she's in possession of Lin. Vampire. no. So we will call the vampires Chicken Nugget. I woke up this morning feeling like a chicken nugget. Okay, so Chicken Nugget was now in possession of the body of Lin again, so she reunited with Cloaca, and Chicken and Cloaca were basically mingling, and they were very happy and very romantically into each other, and Cliff was given the very important mission of shooting them to end the course. But uh, of course, as he's a moron, he shot himself in the leg. Resulting in the vampires and Cloaca being free to roam the castle, but before that, Neumar saw that his possessed girl was making out with Cloaca, who he thought was crusty because they are the same actor and apparently a lookalike in this history. So, long story short, um, Cliff shot himself. Uh, Neumar was sort of defeated and he thought that he was being shitted on, which it sort of but not really, and Virginator kicked the ass of Cloaca. And Cloaca ended up in the vampire Corgi. So, who wrote this again? On the middle of this mess, as I said, Cloaca ended up in the vampire Corgi. And Chicken Nugget, who was still in possession of the body of Lin, took Krusty because she was confused, and she was making out severely and very intensely, almost trying to eat his mouth. And then, when the music box was closed, that removes the course. So, she was now Lin again, and she was utterly disgusted at the idea of making out with Krusty. So, of course, she ran out from there disgusted. And. Cloaca was in the Vampire Corgi, however, in this Vampire Corgi he was... He was followed. He was followed by Virginator, in which she was unable to defeat him because the director, Clancy Anandas, stopped her and right there he fired her. But she gave to them. So after that she did some acrobacies, kicked the ass of two men, and did some Uncharted or Lara Croft type of acrobacies and posed very cool in the middle of the night because of course she is Virginator, so she's very cool. On the laboratory, Wang was stitching the body of Leah together because of course he's Chinese and Chinese people always do everything right according to the fancy stereotype that he's based upon and everybody was puking because there was a puke joke that was actually funny but I will not show it here because it's disgusting and I don't want to disgust my beautiful viewers. So after that, um, Wang said that he loved goat testicles or weird foods because of course Chinese people only eat weird foods instead of traditional Chinese food which is actually healthier than most food on the rest of the world. So, another offensive stereotype for the offensive stereotype counter. <gasps> Cloaca fell wasted on a coffin and he was transported to a funeral where everybody was mourning the loss of a very beloved person. But then, right there, when the father was giving out his prayers, Cloaca decided to resuscitate, and everybody was very upset at the fact that their apparently loved one resuscitated. How dare that person to resuscitate? I mean, he's dead, 
we're mourning him, he needs to remain dead. I mean, I'm going to be quite honest. If I was to, I, if I was mourning my grandma and she decided to resuscitate, I will take her on the trip of her life. We will be running motorcycles topless, we will be on every single hardcore game that's out there, like for example a roller coaster very extreme where people shouldn't go, and I don't know, I will give her the time of her life, because resuscitating is something that not everybody is able to do. Then Krusty wake up in the bed with Dragura, the love of his life, but of course as she has a hump now she is horrible and disgusting, because the first thing he did when he woke up was bleeding a woman with a disability, because of course that's very funny, and he was saying the meanest things possible to her, because comedy, I guess. So after that event, um, the Clancy Anandas, the father of Dragura, came into the room and he pretended that everything was normal because he even knowing he is an imbecile, he's not a moron. Well, I mean, he is, but he's not that dumb, so he does not want to be tortured in the torture chamber of Clancy Anandas. So he went to the bathroom, as every gentleman does, and he disappeared. Yeah, typical gentleman behavior. Robert Abel. If your idea of a good time is laughing with repulsion, at a humpback Romanian nympho with a torture-loving midget dad, or tittering every time a bonk appears, a darkened tither awaits you. And Newmar gave some piece of his mind to Krusty, and he gave some piece of his mind in a letter that basically stated that he's allowing him to have intercourse with his girlfriend, and it was supposed to be sarcastic, but as both of them are brain dead, uh, he thought it, it was literal. So Chicken Nugget uh, kidnapped Krusty and took him to a secret vampire lair where a medical vampire ritual was going to take place, but this vampire is very misogynistic and revolves around nudity, because of course every ritual needs to have naked woman for it to work. Wow, how creative. And also vampires are not only objects, but they are also demons, people, dead people. I mean, there are no objects, so another offensive stereotype. Roger Moore, one laugh, vampires, stuffed in their coffins, on a horse-drawn wagon, winning to the driver, are we there yet? The ritual was being continued, and the ritual basically consisted that they needed to take out the heart from Lin for Chicken Nugget to revive. And of course, uh, Krusty was very upset at the idea of pulling out the heart from the body of Lin, but Chicken Nugget couldn't hold back on her misogyny either, because remember that Lin is based on a very offensive stereotype of a blonde, a dumb blonde, so, Chicken Nugget said, oh, she's an imbecile, she will not need her body. The girl that belongs to me die. She is an imbecile anyway. And because of course, like, she doesn't need it because she's not a person and she doesn't have any rights be just because she is not as intellectual as other people. Yeah, of course. So, okay. So Wang stitched again the body of Leah, however, he did it too late. And this resulted in the director, Clancy Anandas, putting Dragura on the new body, and Wang kidnapped the head of Leah. So when they were on the party, the head of Leah ended up in the trash, for some reason. Well, I mean, I know why, but the movie doesn't even try to make it a logical reason. And once it was in the trash, um, the disgusting, miserable, disgusting, no no no, human being of his boyfriend decided to confess to her that he and her sister are mingling. So I just will say two things. Disgusting. Perfidiously disgusting. 
Cloak robbed an ambulance, so he arrived to the school and he was fighting Krusty. But then Cloak decided to, to send his three minions to attack Ferginator. And Ferginator, as she's a badass, she won the fight. And then Cloaca was fighting with Krusty, but both of them are sort of brain dead. And long story short, they were on the party and Ragura lost an arm. And then Cliff actually did something right for the first time in his life, or at least in this movie, or in this storyline of events, I guess. So he shot the right vampire. And then peace was restored in the universe. Oh, wait. wait, wait. Not really, because before ending this movie, actually, Clancy Hernandez confessed to Dragura, his daughter, that he basically removed the body of Leah to give it to her, because why not? And even knowing that Leah was utterly miserable being bodiless, and Dragura just decided to be complacent, just as her father, because she, she kept the body. Um, like, why won't give it back, or at least give Leah the body of Dragura? I mean, out of bare decency? No? Okay, so we could say that it was sort of a happy ending, I guess. There is a prologue, so I will read you the prologue, because I will not even do the effort of remembering everything that happened, because everything is trash. So, I guess we will go to the prologue. At the end, Clocas Paswatas, I mean, well, he was a goner, so no comments on that, Cliff turned into a vampire hunter. And a rather sexist one because he only uses that like as a brack, but okay. Leah's head got a magic act in Vegas after falling in love with Brody. Mike has some sort of a crush for cross deserts or trans people, and I'm going to be quite honest here, most likely they were trying to make a transphobic joke, because apparently, and still to today, some stupid people think that trans women are just men in a dress, so yeah, most likely it was a transphobic joke, so shame again on them, and we will add this to the offensive stereotype counter. And, I mean, if he likes trans women or cross deserts, what is the problem? Like, it's not funny, it's his preference, and preference, preferences need to be respected. You cannot demand for respect if you don't respect other people. <clears throat> Wang became a plastic surgeon who botches patients because he is smart but dumb at the same time, I guess. Pete and Danny stayed in Romania and made a fortune importing blue jeans. Lynn and Newmar are now tantric professors for the Codex Erotica, and what in the world is this card wheel? And I got to admit, I was impressed by their gymnastics, so this will get a 10 out of 10. Virginator, who her real name in this movie is Theodora, decided to dye her hair blonde and record the Duquesse, and became one of the biggest acts of the 2000s. Nah, I'm just kidding, she actually decided to be a cop, but that history is boring, so we will just stick with she recording Ted Duquesne. And Dragoon and Krusty had a baby, which let me tell you something about me. I have I have had more procedures than what you can see on camera, and I would never dare to reproduce because I know, I know my offspring would inherit the same defects that I had. And let me tell you, they are severe defects, hell defects, so no. I wouldn't put no one through that misery as I suffered. So yeah, surgeries and procedures are not hereditary, and this, this is how this rampant piece of trash ended. Now, this is the conclusion for this very strange piece of trash movie, so I'm going to give my most formulated and calculated opinion, 
because we have a lot of things to really dissect here. So first of all, and the main thing for me at least personally, is that this movie, even knowing it's supposed to be a politically incorrect comedy, it's not funny at all. And it's not just because it is offensive and weird, there's a lot of offensive and weird movies, series that I actually can laugh at for what they are trying to do, which is sort of to eradicate or just make fun of how people perceive these stereotypes, but in reality there are just echoing those stereotypes, like for example Drawn Together is a very good example of a series that was able to incorporate very offensive stereotypes and yet make it work. But here there's no real progression on, on how they thought, because even with the character of Krusty, he never really took the time to deconstruct why he was actually so disgusted at the fact that Dragura had a hump, instead it was like, oh, Dragura is now hot, I will make her babies. Like, what? No. It's offensive in nature, but offensive for women, offers offensive for Romania, and offensive for transgender women. Because on this channel, we do not promote transphobia. We are pro-trans people. Because, let me tell you this, it's your body, your decision, and that goes for everything. Unless your decisions are affecting other human beings, like in this movie with misogyny, because, I mean, misogyny affects women, so of course, and other important fact is that this movie even though it had a lot of history in Romania because, well I mean I don't even know where the castle is but if you're going to do a historic movie or at least based on a specific location in the world you need to do the very minimum research. I myself don't know almost nothing about Romania more than the fact that it has castles and that's it. My ignorance for Romania is astounding. So I myself wouldn't dare to make a movie about Romania or about vampires in Romania because I know nothing and I don't want to propel ignorance across the world with my ignorant movie. And also, when it comes to vampire literature, it seems that they just visited a lot of videos on the hub, if you know what type of hub I'm referring to, and over there they did their research about vampires. Now, for vampires, this book was written a long 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 time ago, and this movie is about a vampire female who was enamored, or who actually wanted to enamor another female, so it was like a sort of a lesbian vampire relation, which it has nothing wrong which absolutely normal for those times this book oh this book was controversial let me tell you but it just goes to show that in this book that vampire didn't need a leader who was a male and this vampire was sufficient in itself smart enough to be able to bypass generations to destroy families to get her final objective so vampires are not dumb and brainless as painted as on this movie or at least their origin in literature is not what is shown to be. Now, in regards to the cinematography, sound design and the script, well the script is trash. I don't have anything else to elaborate there. Based on the cinematography, if you didn't know, and I know that right now my set doesn't look that professional and that my camera is not the right lens for it to blur the background, but I mean I'm improving, it's very expensive to do YouTube videos just to get a hundred views. Hehe. <laughs> In any case, um, the cinematography wasn't very good, it was mediocre. Um, why I'm saying mediocre, it wasn't astounding, it was well lit, mostly, so that's a positive, but that's the bare minimum when you're filming a movie, when you have a studio backing you up, and when you have at least some budget. So no, um, it doesn't get a pass because a lot of people, if they were giving that budget, they would be able to do more incredible things. So yeah, no a pass there on cinematography. On regards to the history and the script, well the script is trash, but no, I actually have something else to elaborate. Um, when you're reading a script, especially a script that has this many characters, it could be all over the place, and quite sincerely this movie is all over the place, because we don't have sufficient time to follow the characters effectively, we have two groups and we have many other characters that are intertwined who we don't really get to explore their background, who they are, what they wanted, at the end the prologue was 
rather weird because for example the dudes who got rich by selling blue jeans they were never painted as greedy people or as ambitious people in fact i think they were painted as the most grossest ones so why would they all of a sudden be rich just because they sold blue jeans i mean i know that pete knew that selling well that exchanging blue jeans was a way of getting things in romania but i don't think it's a valuable currency or at least not on the not on the history itself because it wasn't constructed as such but okay and also leah wanted her body back so at the end she's just getting a magic act like sort of accepting her destiny of being bodiless doesn't make a lot of sense for the character because the character herself wanted her body back and she wasn't comfortable with the decision of just being ahead so it's it's not matching with the motivation against the conflict. And Virginator didn't think big girls don't cry. Mm, well, I mean, that's just a very bad joke of mine. But she, Theodora, was never painted as someone who wanted to pursue justice. She just was painted as someone who wanted to pursue a vampire cult. But for example, when Leah lost her body, she did absolutely nothing more than stand there and be unfaced like this. So why all of a sudden she is now prosecuting justice? Why is she a cop? Why is she trying to find were werewolves in the US? Like none of this is making sense overall and I would say that the movie is very deficient. A scary movie is also a very disgusting movie based on a lot of stereotypes but at least there they have motivations and the story was stupid as well but at least it had something to offer. Laughs, I guess. Well, no, it actually doesn't have not much to offer, but it's a overall better comedy. So, yeah. Mm, if you want to do something valuable with your time, I would suggest for you to read... Sherlock Holmes. Because thanks to this book is that I'm able to speak fluent English and I'm talking English to you in this video. Because, yes, it's not my first language. If you didn't know. Well, now you know. But yeah, you should go and read a book instead of watching trash movies because they actually make you dumber. I guess. I don't know. I believe. Yeah. No? Okay. In any case, that's it. Is it? No. It's not it because remember that I can be your favorite editor. So, link below. So, as always, I will end this video in a high note.